step down. So my brain hurts worse. Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, we're still awaiting one candidate, and if he arrives, then he'll just join us up here on the, at the table. Um, but I don't want to, for, for respect to everyone's time, I want to get this thing started as close to t on time as possible. Welcome to the 2013 Vallejo City Council Candidates Forum, hosted by the, and sponsored by the Vallejo Chamber of Commerce in conjunction with the Vallejo Business Alliance members, including our regional chamber partners, the Solano County Black Chamber of Commerce, the Solano Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, and the Filipino American Chamber of Commerce of Solano County. I'm your moderator tonight. My name is Michael Cohen. I'm the past chairman of the Vallejo Chamber of Commerce, current chairman of the Vallejo Chamber of Commerce Political Action Committee. I welcome each and every one of you tonight and thank you for coming out and showing your support for these candidates and your interest in the city of Vallejo. We are hosted tonight by our good friends here at the Empress Theater. We thank the Emperor's Board of Directors and staff for this opportunity to use this beautiful facility and share it with so many Vallejoans who are here tonight. Thank you very much. As you all know, we have an upcoming election in November that has four seats available for the Vallejo City Council. There are three seats that are open for the four-year term and one seat open to fill the two-year remaining term of former council member and current Solano County Supervisor Aaron Hannigan. On Tuesday, November 5th, Vallejoans will be asked to consider the following candidates for their vote. These names are presented to you in alphabetical order and <clears throat> by, which they seat, by which seat they are running for. For the two-year seat, you will choose one of the following, Mr. Ronald Johnson, Jr., Ms. Joanne Shively, and Dr. Rosanna Verda Aliga. For the four-year seat, we will choose three of the following, Mr. Herman Woody Blackwell, Ms. Pippin Dew, Mr. Jess Malgapo, Mr. Tony Mapalo, Ms. Liet Metzenheimer, Ms. Katie Miesner, and Ms. Chris Platzer. Mr. Chris Platzer, excuse me. I'm sorry, and Mr. Tony Summers, excuse me. I apologize, I'm getting some real bad feedback behind me and I'm, everything is echoing. I don't know if we can take care of that or not. We can't, okay. We ask that you note that the candidates are seated before you in random order. They were selected earlier by pulling out of a hat the numbers for which they sit at the table. We will begin the forum by asking each of the candidates to tell you a little bit about themselves and their platform. We will be giving them each two minutes to do this. We will then ask questions we have gathered from members of the Vallejo Chamber of Commerce and the Vallejo Business Alliance. The format gets a little complicated with having 11 candidates up here, and I, all of us struggled for quite some time on how we were going to do this. The best way to do it that we, we came up with is as follows. Question one will be asked to seat number one, which is Dr. Verda Liga here. She will have 90 seconds to respond to that question. In response to that question, seats two, three, and four will have 30 seconds to rebut that one question. Question two will be asked at seat number five. Ms. Dew. The next three seats will have 30 seconds to respond. We will do that all the way through, so each candidate will be asked one original question with 90 seconds to respond. In the end, each candidate will have an opportunity to respond first to one question, I'm sorry, in the end, each candidate will be able to respond to a closing question for which they will have three minutes to respond. This question, this question is designed as an open-ended type of question to allow them to both answer the question as well as do any type of closing or wrap-up they wish to do. There's timers in the front, Larry Acera, Rudy Manfredi, and Tony Shannon, which will hold colored cards. The yellow card will be 10 seconds left, the red card will mean your time is up. I will do my best to cut you off mid-sentence without being too disruptive, but please be conscientious and respectful to your other candidates. With that, we will start. Question number one, Dr. Verda Liga. Again, you'll have 90 seconds to respond. I'm sorry, opening statement, yes. 
I'm sorry. I'm ready for the 90 seconds. You're ready for the 90 seconds. So please give your opening statement for two minutes, please. Good evening. I'm Rosanna Verdera Liga, running for the two year seat on the Vallejo City Council. Good evening to all of you. I am running for City Council because I am passionate about Vallejo. I am a 32 year Vallejo resident with 30 years of volunteer management, leadership, and public service experience, including 18 years as a member of the Vallejo School Board and the Solano County Board of Education. I will use this experience to help rebuild and reshape our city. As a senior manager with Solano County Health and Social Services with a doctorate degree in counseling psychology, I am skilled at team building, planning, managing programs, staff, and budget. My community involvement includes membership with Seroptimist International of Vallejo, Vallejo Sister City Association, Participatory Budgeting Committee, and Fighting Back Partnership Board. To rebuild and reshape Vallejo, my priorities are public safety, crime reduction, job creation, economic development, financial stability, recovery, and infrastructure road repairs. I will bring consensus building skills, team building skills, and I will work with the mayor and council members to make Vallejo a great place to live, learn, work, and play. I ask that you join me and help rebuild and reshape Vallejo as a business-friendly, safe, financially sound, welcoming, diversity welcoming, as well as a vibrant community for today and tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Summers. My name is Anthony Tony Summers, uh, to make it easy. And I've been a resident of Vallejo for 19 years. I'm married to my wonderful wife, Denise, and I have three daughters, Tierra, 28, uh, uh, Taylor, who is 19 and attending Sac State University now, and my youngest daughter, Lauren, who's 13. I'm excited about the endorsements from uh, State Assemblywoman Susan Bonilla, County Supervisors Aaron Hannigan, as well as uh, Skip Thompson and Mayor Davis, uh, many, many business people and leaders in town, um, the Solano County Central Labor Council, as well as the Central Democrats and the building trades. But I'm also excited about the possibility of becoming a Vallejo City Council member and helping to move uh, Vallejo forward. I want our citizens to feel absolutely safe in our city uh, through the support of the public safety and uh, to make Vallejo a destination city where people want to come to Vallejo and not just drive through it. Lastly, when it comes to jobs, I am a job placement specialist. That's what I do every day. And I have the benefit of literally uh, taking people from unemployment to employment on a daily basis. And therefore, I know what employers uh, are looking for to build a strong workforce and the skill sets people need to get uh, quality and livable wage jobs. And jobs are certainly a priority for me. And uh, I want to um, let you know, I just happen to be a pastor of a local congregation, and so I have a good sense and feel uh, for what's going on in our community, and I'm grateful uh, for the opportunity to become a part of the Vallejo City Council, and I look forward to serving you and uh, look forward to your support. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mapalo. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tony Mapalo. I'm uh, barely uh, nine years here in Vallejo, and people ask me why I uh, decided to run for a uh, council member of uh, the Vallejo Council. Uh, well, basically, uh, my background is uh, I am a, I've been a senior bank executive for more than 30 years starting as uh, an executive trainee in 1970 until I became a CEO uh, in uh, 2000, uh, 19, uh, 1980. In all those 30 years, I, I feel that my, my experience that I have 
that I have gained as, as a bank executive would be applicable in terms of managing the city, especially now that we are in, in a deficit. And uh, what are my primary concerns? My primary concerns are, as you all know, Vallejo is now having a high crime rate. So crime number one and two, uh, generation of employment. My, uh, my platform is very simple. How, how do we create employment? We can only do this by inviting big investors, like perhaps a, a big casino to be established here in Vallejo, and maybe a, uh, a, uh, and maybe a, uh, an entertainment, uh, a, a large entertainment group like uh, Disneyland, because we don't have that here in Northern California. And uh, to alleviate the, uh, the, uh, the crime problem. We're gonna have to wrap it up, thank you. Right now. Your time's up, thank you. Thank you. I would ask if everyone could please be courteous and respectful, there, there's no need to boo. Uh, these people are all up here volunteering, trying to do betterment for the city of Vallejo, so thank you. Ms. Metzenheimer. Good evening. My name is Liette Meitzenheimer. I've been a resident of Vallejo for the last 27 years. I've just recently retired from federal service after 38 years. I've also raised my son here in Vallejo. I've worked on a numerous committees and, and groups here in Vallejo. I recently have completed a 13-year stint with the Greater Vallejo Recreation District on the Board of Directors. I also served on the Vallejo Alcohol and Tobacco Policy Coalition for the last 17 years, and I served on the City of Vallejo's Human Relations Commission for the last 10 years. I've worked with other organizations such as Omega Boys and Girls Club, the Education of Justice with the school district, and for other organizations with the neighborhood to work on issues of quality life to bring it up for the citizens of Vallejo. I'm running because I have a love for this city. I moved here by choice and I remain here by choice. I want to see our city to come back from bankruptcy and realize its full potential that we, can, that we know can happen. So we have a great city, we have great opportunities waiting for us. I have the experience and knowledge from the 13 years that I served on GVRD of working with a budget, having a sustainable budget, and with also with working with employees. I have proven leadership, and I have the ability to build consensus and collaboration. I have also shown myself to be a fiscally responsible person to the taxpayers. Vallejo needs everyone to pull together and work for what's in the best interest of all of Vallejo. I believe that the city needs a balanced decision-making process that will benefit the residents as well as the city as a whole, and I am that person. I am a grassroots candidate that is being supported with grassroots support. I have no special interest income. I have only one special interest, and that's the citizens of Vallejo. I have shown that I can make the hard decisions, make the right decisions for the city of Vallejo, and I'm committed to a better Vallejo. Thank you. Thank you. If I can make sure all the candidates hold the microphone close so everyone can hear yourself throughout the building, please. Ms. Du. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for being here tonight. I would also like to thank the Chamber of Commerce staff, Valpac, the Vallejo Business Alliance, and the Empress for hosting this event tonight. My name is Pippin Du, and I have lived in the area for over 25 years. I chose to buy my first home in Vallejo and raise my daughter here. I am a local realtor and chairwoman of the Vallejo Chamber of Commerce. I've gotten involved in my community through Leadership Vallejo, the Vallejo Business Alliance, the Solano Association of Realtors, and most recently served on the steering committee and was the facilitator for the Public Safety Committee for participatory budgeting. As a mother and a business owner, I'm concerned about our city's public safety and the shortage of police officers on the streets. Our streets need repairs. We have blighted areas and abandoned buildings. We have a high unemployment rate, and we have the highest number of residents living in poverty in the county. 
Additionally, we have very limited resources and are facing stru structural budget deficits in the next fiscal year. As chairwoman for the Vallejo Chamber of Commerce, I know much of this can be addressed by generating revenues and supporting existing businesses to expand, which is the fastest way to create new jobs. We need to capitalize on our highly skilled labor force and our higher education institutions that are located right here in Vallejo. Through my work at the Chamber, I have become well-versed on where the opportunity for development lies in Vallejo. Mare Island, the waterfront, downtown, and the fairgrounds all have so much potential, but it does not come without its challenges. Over the years, I have been working hard through the Chamber to build relationships within the business community to foster strong, stable economic growth and development, create jobs, and increase revenues to the city. More jobs and improved public safety is key in continuing our forward progress and momentum. As your council member, I pledge to be relentless in the pursuit of sustainable economic growth and development. I'd be honored to have your vote in November. Thank you, Ms. Shively. Thank you all for coming this evening. Your interest in what happens in the city of Vallejo is obvious. And this is what everybody needs to do, be involved. Thank you for the, to the Chambers for sponsoring this event. And thank you to the Empress for providing the venue. I'm Joanne Shively. I was born, raised, and educated here in the city of Vallejo. And I have worked here for most of my banking career. I'm a retired bank executive with experience in investments, management, administration, human resources, and supervision. In addition to that career, I was also the co-owner of a successful local business for 15 years. So I know what it's like to be in business for oneself. You get to pick your hours, but you better like long ones. I have served on the Vallejo City Council for three terms. In my most recent one, I recovered $2.7 million for the general fund for loans that had been made to the transportation fund over the years. That facilitated Vallejo's early exit from bankruptcy. In a prior term, actually in my first one, I recovered $9.8 million of Marine World debt for the City of Vallejo and the Redevelopment Agency that was going to be written off. That helped a lot. I have also worked for the City Charter Improvements that, in, that require a structurally balanced budget, a general fund reserve policy, and a five-year financial plan. Most recently, I chaired the Citizens Public Safety Committee 80% of their recommendations have already been implemented. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Meisner. Good evening, everyone, uh, and thank you to the Chamber of Commerce and the other folks that arranged this uh, forum and to the Empress uh, to share my qualifications with voters. I'm Katie Meisner, and I'm running for Vallejo City Council because this is Vallejo's time to shine. We're out of bankruptcy, and we've made great strides this past year. I'm running because I see what's good about Vallejo, and I know we can, I can help make Vallejo great. I have more than 20 years of, of experience in financial management with oversight of budgets of more than $25 million. I know how to generate revenue, spend limited fi funds wisely, and I am ready to do the job of City Council. I'm in, an independent candidate. My campaign is run by volunteers, and the funds that I raise come from Vallejo citizens. You know that as a council member, I will make decisions that are best for the Vallejo taxpayer and not for outside special interests. Instead of making campaign promises tonight, I ask you to look at my record. I have been a volunteer and community advocate since I moved to Vallejo with zero financial gain since I moved to Vallejo with my husband, Jeff Kingman, and I uh, 13 years ago. Mm. I attend meetings, I contribute ideas, I work with others to get things done. Those who know me know I work tirelessly and I am results oriented. I'm a steering committee member of participatory budgeting and I was honored to facilitate the education committee. And our, one of our uh, projects won, it was the uh, 
uh, improvements to the Omega Bo Boys and Girls Club in North Vallejo. Other than that, I also serve on the Vallejo County Fair Board. I'm the Vice President of the Vallejo Heights Neighborhood Association. I'm a Better Vallejo uh, founding member. And I was the treasurer of the Meyer Theater Guild. As a downtown advisory group member, I helped advocate for the funding to repair this beautiful Empress Theater. And I also ran in two charity marathons and I raised $15,000 for HIV and AIDS services. We deserve safe neighborhoods where we want to live and we need good city services to match. And my experience and financial ex qualifications will guarantee that we get both. So please vote for me on November 5th. I got uh, Hello. Thank you, Mr. Blackwell. Good afternoon. My name is Herman Blackwell, Woody Blackwell. I possess a BA degree in business administration, the Alamada Sonoma State University, uh, coupled with uh, years of extensive experience in the air, both public and private sector experience in the area of employment and policy administration. I'm, I'm running for, for city council because I'm convinced that I can help this city navigate its way out of poverty. Poverty is the number one compelling reason why we're, we're in the situation we're in today. And I, uh, with poverty, it's, it goes hand in hand with crime. So if we, if we reduce poverty, we will reduce crime. I, I'm, I'm also running for another reason. I would like to exchange the perception of city government. Uh, there's a groundswell of citizens that feel that the city staff is not responsive to the needs of, of the citizens here in Vallejo. It doesn't address their concerns. And I, I would like to correct that. Um, after all, having said that, the citizens, you write the checks by way of your property tax contribution that drops right into the general fund. And the general fund is the, is the source that subsidizes every dollar salary and payroll at, in, in every city department. So it's, it's, it's overdue. When, when we come to the city staff, we should be received uh, handsomely, you know, it should have a private sector customer service uh, report, reception um, because we are the boss and I want that to be reflected amongst the mindset of staff if I am elected. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Platzer. I too would like to thank the Chamber and the Empress Theater for holding this event and thank all of you for being here tonight. It's a beautiful Thursday night in Vallejo and I'd rather be on the water and not on this side of the table. <laughs> anyway, my name is Chris Platcher and I'm running for city council. A little bit about myself. My father was recruited to this to Huntsville, Alabama, where I was born. He worked with Werner Von Braun to put an American on the moon. I moved to Vallejo in 1994. My friends made fun of me because there were no Starbucks in Vallejo. I'm first generation Austro-American. The Austrians are the Germans with the sense of humor. In 1996, when the base closed and we saw 5,800 jobs walk off the island, I bought a house in Vallejo Heights. I love the water. I love being near the water. I love being on the water. I worked for 14 years in Silicon Valley for technology companies. The only way I can describe that to you is it's like driving at a constant 80 miles an hour, working 60 hours a week, traveling all over the world. I was one of those knowledge workers with six-digit salaries. Late in my professional career, I changed course and I went to the California Maritime Academy where I graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Marine Transportation and United States Coast Guard license to be a deck officer on very large ocean-going vessels. I am a card-carrying, dues-paying member of the Master Mates and Pilots Union. The, Marine, the International Marine Division of ILA AFL CIO. I'm running for council to explore and discuss and have an adult conversation about creating a port, a public port district, the 12th in California, that would take the most valuable asset Vallejo has and turn it into jobs, 10,000 jobs by 2020. Thank you. Mr. Mogapa. Thank you, Michael. Good evening, everybody. I, I too would like to take uh, time to thank the uh, Vallejo Chamber of Commerce, Valpac, Viba, all the organizers of this uh, event, 
uh, and the management of the Empress Theater. Um, my name is Jess Malgapo. I, I am currently already serving you on the Vallejo City Council. My family and I moved to Vallejo in 1981 due to my assignments as a member of the United States Navy. I've been stationed on ships, homeported in the local area, and as a young Navy lieutenant, I was the controller at the Navy Combat Systems Technical Schools Command at Mare Island, which we now know as uh, Sturo University. My family and I fell in love with Vallejo back then and are still very much in love with this beautiful city, its history, its diverse population, which has coexisted peacefully over many decades. Um, I'm a 25-year uh, Navy veteran. I started my career at the very bottom entry-level rank uh, of seaman recruit. After five years, the Navy offered me an opportunity to become a commissioned officer, which I gladly accepted. And I proceeded to uh, receive training at Officer Candidate School in Newport, Rhode Island, received further training, specialized training in Athens, Georgia. And I spent uh, 12 of my 25-year Navy career assigned to combat ships, deployed both in the Pacific and the Atlantic theaters of operation. Um, you know, a, Navy, a Naval officer's life is very intense and very demanding as we work mostly under difficult conditions. In other words, it's pretty much like being a councilman in the city of Vallejo. <laughs> Upon retirement from the military service in the year 2000, I joined the Fortune 500 company, uh, and I proceeded to have a career for about 10 years in private industry. As a council member, I'm already working to deliver to you the best service the city of Vallejo could afford, and this is the new bottom line. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you all very much for that uh, brief introduction of yourselves. I think it's great for everyone to get an understanding of who you are and what you stand for. So now we will start with the questions, starting with question number one with uh, Dr. Verda Oliga. Um, again, the question, as it's posed to you, you'll get 90 seconds, and then the rebuttal will be 30 seconds. So the question is, what is your plan for the development of Mare Island as a whole, and more particularly the north end of Mare Island, and what would you do to retain the current businesses and attract new businesses to Mare Island? It's a two-part question, thank you. Currently, Mare Island, uh, North Island, the City Council made a uh, decision about a month ago to demolish the buildings there and also to secure a uh, grant to uh, pay for that uh, demo de demolition. We know that there is still need, uh, a, there's cleanup that needs to happen, so we need to ensure that that happens because there's still lots of toxic waste in that part of uh, Mare Island. How to bring businesses to Mare Island? Lennar, you know, we have to look at Mare Island as a total package, not just the north and the south. So Lennar was given the uh, contract to develop all of Mare Island. So that has to be uh, hand in, developed hand in hand. Um, the current plan uh, calls for an educational component, a light industry component, so that needs to be developed. North Island has to be developed hand in hand with uh, Lennar plan. And that was approved by, by the voters and also approved by, I mean, approved by the city council in the 1990s. The other part of the question, um, we need to bring businesses to Vallejo and Mare Island is part of Vallejo. We need to address the crime issue because no business will come to Vallejo if the crime rate is very high. So again, public safety is a main issue in my campaign. I don't want to ensure that people in this community feel safe and we need to hire more police officers up to the authorized level. Then businesses will come to Vallejo. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Summers. Well, I believe, first of all, Vallejo is a destination city. And as it relates to Mare Island, it is one of the most valuable assets that we have um, in the North Island. There's so much traffic that goes by Highway 37. Once the buildings are demolished, we would love to see uh, some type of entertainment centered uh, down that way, or at least uh, some type of amenities where persons can stop, even if it's for gas, if it's hotels. Uh, we are very interested in that. Um, and since Lennard does uh, 
uh, have the responsibility of the 650 acres in the South Island. Uh, we are in conversation with them. Thank um, you. Yes. Remember, Thank it's, still, it's only 30 seconds 30 on seconds. the rebuttal. Right. It will go quick. Mr. Mapala. All right, when it comes to uh, Mayor Allen, as we all know, uh, Mayor Allen used to be a shipping and commerce hub uh, of the city. So we need to uh, invite more investors uh, to be able to establish more businesses there uh, by giving them incentives to be able to attract these new investors. Thank you. Ms. Metzenheimer. Yes, my plan for the North End of Mare Island as well as the rest of Mare Island would be to bring in manufacturing jobs, light industry, and clean businesses. There's also a, a provision that we could also use the existing buildings there. We have good businesses that have been here that have worked with us since Mare Island started leasing the space. We want to expand that and make sure that they stay there and that they're able to grow with our city. I'd also like to see that we have some quality jobs there that would secure a pathway for our citizens to go into secure and sustainable living. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Du, how do you propose the city of Vallejo balance the budget given the deficit it is currently facing? Um, so, there are a lot of challenges with balancing the budget. Um, I think one of the first things that needs to be addressed is making sure that the numbers um, are correct. They will be um, revising the budget soon. Um, property taxes have gone up. As you all know, prices for homes have gone up in Solano County. And year to year, they've gone up 30% in our county, second highest in the whole Bay Area. Contra Costa was first with 38% increase year to year. Um, and with that increase, uh, property taxes can be reassessed. For um, most areas, at one point in time, when the prices had fallen so far and so many homeowners were requesting price um, to have their property taxes reassessed, um, they decided to just do blanket reassessments for areas based upon the, the median. And so um, there is a, a, a Prop 8 that, that stipulates that if your property has been reassessed down due to the market conditions, when the market improves, you can be reassessed up to the current market value or the Prop 13 ceiling. Um, I know for myself, my own home got reassessed 20% higher, and uh, so I will be paying more taxes myself. Um, and I'm happy to do so. I'm happy to pay my fair share. Um, I think that... Um, there are a lot of challenges with looking at how to balance the budget, um, but starting with the right numbers would be helpful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Shively. This year's budget has a $5.2 million deficit in it, and the proposal or the way the city plans to close that deficit is through the negotiations they are presently carrying on with city employees for new contracts. So many services have already been cut, there is virtually no place else to cut. One of the things that needs to be done in these employee contracts is to standardize <clears throat> benefits. They're not the same for every employee group and they should be. Thank you, Ms. Miesner. I also agree about the uh, benefits. I really, I think it's only fair to have employee uh, groups that have similar benefits. Um, and balancing the budget, I've managed very large budgets and it's difficult. You've gotta make some Sophie's choices. We can't make promises to people that we cannot deliver on. So I think using a scalpel and not a machete is really important and going in and making sure that we really carefully spend our money and it, it, budgets are a moving target. They're always changing because of the, you, you can only predict the future in so many ways. So thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Blackwell. Simply put, it's a, there's a tremendous shortfall in, in this deficit. That shortfall is found in the, in the uh, general fund. See, our property tax contributions have been reduced due to bank foreclosures. That's why I introduced this uh, foreclosure ordinance uh, a while back to, to abate foreclosures. When, when we possess the, ability, the inability to pay our mortgages, 
we are no longer paying property taxes, and that's why the general fund has a, has a tremendous shortfall. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is for you, Mr. Platzer. If elected, how do you plan to work with the Vallejo City Unified School District to improve the image of the schools here in Vallejo? Please be specific. Well, I would do much along the lines of what's already being done with the Vallejo Education and Business Alliance, where they work to create academies to get troubled kids off the street into jobs that teach them a trade and a craft. And I would link that with a port where the businesses would take these kids in and teach them a trade. Not everyone needs to be an information worker, but you make a lot of money as a rigger, as a plumber, as a pipe fitter. These are good blue collar jobs and you can grow your way out of the deficit by putting more people on the tax rolls. Thank you. Mr. Mogapa. Well, the school district uh, is really not in the purview of the city council. However, we could do some, uh, uh, enter into some discussions and uh, some brainstorming. Their superintendent is doing a, a terrific job. The truancy is down, graduation rates are up, uh, but certainly there's room to improve. But I think a dialogue between the city and the uh, school board uh, uh, would be a place to start. Thank you. Dr. Verdoliga. Sure. How do you plan to work with the Vallejo City Unified School District to improve the image of the schools here in Vallejo? Please be specific. Thank you. Currently, the Vallejo Education Business Alliance is an organization that allows the district and the city to collaborate with businesses, so we need to strengthen that. The city and the school district, together with GVRD, also has the interagency committee. We need to strengthen that and perhaps also move forward with the JPA um, concept and also to provide internship programs and apprenticeship programs for the kids that are in the academies, which are career academies, because those are career tracks for these kids and we need to partner with them. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Summers. Yes, I think it's very important that we continue to partner with um, Dr. Bishop and the leadership in the school district. Uh, they have now the wall-to-wall -wall academies where uh, young people are being put on track for career opportunities. Um, we want to encourage them to continue to put vocational skills back in the schools. And I want to do what we did over the summer. We actually hired uh, young people, we worked with uh, uh, certainly the Chamber and Pippin and others and got other businesses to hire uh, young people who needed employment opportunities for the summer. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Mr. Mbapala, this, this next question is for you. If it was entirely up to you, how would you solve the public safety issues in Vallejo and rectify the issue that the public at large does not feel safe here in Vallejo? All right, <clears throat> referring to the crime situation, I believe uh, Vallejo is not in a position right now to, uh, to hire uh, police officers. And so I propose that we, uh, we hire uh, armed security guards instead because they are, uh, you know, uh, we can afford to, to pay uh, these security guards. And we can, uh, we can provide them with radio so that they can be in, in, uh, in uh, in constant communication with the police force. Thank you. Ms. Metzenheimer. I think the most important thing that we could do now, since Please the put city, the microphone closer, thank I you. I think the most important thing that we could do now to support the police chief and the decisions that he's made, because he's making tremendous strides to improve public safety. The city council has put into the budget that we're going to increase the number of police that we're hiring. They're actively hiring. There is no problem with picking people up and putting them into the jobs. But I think the most important thing is to support our police chief because he's on the right track as far as building our police department and the community relations. Thank you. Ms. Duke. So um, over the past year, I was the facilitator for the Public Safety Committee through the participatory budgeting process. So I got to work very closely with the police department to find out what their challenges and opportunities were. 
Um, through that process, we got two projects on the ballot, um, Light Up Vallejo, as well as the camera surveillance um, project, which passed. Um, the Light Up project um, is increasing lighting in all public areas, as well as the camera um, system um, has a smart technology feature so that it can be more proactive in identifying crime. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Shively. Thank you. The Public Safety Committee, which was a group of citizens that met from April through December, made many suggestions. Most of them were for the police. 80% of the recommendations that were agreed upon by that committee have been approved or look, being looked at further by both council and the police. 40%, excuse me, half of those have already been implemented. It's public participation that's going to improve our police force. Thank you. Next question is for you, Ms. Meisner. Again, you have 90 seconds to respond to this. What is your position on the development of the waterfront? And if in favor of the development of the waterfront, how would you move forward to make sure this project goes forward? Well, the waterfront actually has a waterfront plan uh, that I actually helped guide uh, through some, uh, a settlement agreement with the city of Vallejo. Uh, it's got, it proposes uh, condo developments, uh, storefronts on the, on the first floor to attract people to enliven the, the streets and keep it eyes on the streets 24-7. Uh, uh, right now it's pretty empty at night and it, it even the proposed uh, uh, office buildings actually are a detriment to the enlivening the street because they close up at night and there's not people out there walking around. So it's a, I think it's a great plan and uh, now that we're coming out of this awful economy that we're in, hopefully there'll be people out there that want to develop it. Yes, I, I would like to propose a, a think tank uh, entity uh, subsidized by uh, through an RFP process. RFP simply means request for proposal. Let's, let's undertake one and come up with a new provider that can come up with solutions on how to make that a more viable commercial entity, the waterfront. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Platzer. When I hear the word waterfront, I think Mare Island. I look at Mare Island and I think, what can we do to revitalize the traditional maritime use of the island? I would work with the shareholders and try to figure out a way to use the port for what it was always used for the last 150 years. And to me, that's a port district, a public port that will create jobs related to the maritime use of the island. And those don't all have to be maritime. It's just shipping, the clothes on your back, the food on your table and the gas in your car, it all gets to you by ship. Thank you, Mr. Magapa. Um, yes, well, if, if, if you travel back in time, the uh, waterfront development was stalled for some time uh, because it was tied up in court uh, and uh, up in litigation. Um, but uh, uh, when the economy uh, turned and the lawsuit was resolved, the developer couldn't make a move because the, uh, the housing market was down. So that's why all we have right now is the parking garage, uh, maybe some businesses moving into the uh, ferry terminal, and the, uh, 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 the new uh, parking garage that's now generating revenue. Thank you. So I have to have a little disclaimer here. I had this all mapped out for 11 candidates, and my numbers are off now to make sure every person gets a question. So it's going to be a little, seem a little um, counterintuitive here. But Mr. Malgapa, this question is for you. You have 90 seconds to respond to this. Do you feel that Vallejo is a business-friendly city? And if so, why? And if not, how can you change this? Vallejo, Vallejo is definitely business-friendly. That, that's not the issue. The issue is public safety. Uh, there's a high rate of criminal activity that uh, occurs in our city, uh, anywhere from burglary to car thefts to uh, uh, shootings. Uh, I hate to say it, but it's true. And businesses have either written us off or they're still sitting on the fence waiting for peace and order to develop uh, more favorably than perhaps they'll make a move. But until we do so, 
not much is happening. Uh, this is why I advocated for the hiring, immediate hiring of additional police officers, which uh, six of them have been hired. Three are in background and the rest are in local police academies. Uh, so until we improve public safety, I seriously doubt that uh, we're going to be at the top of the list of, of companies that are looking for a place to set up shop. So it's not that we're not business friendly, uh, it's the high crime rate that's uh, become a stonewall preventing us from uh, uh, you know, being able to move forward and encouraging developers to even take a look at us. Um, so the, the other thing is we, uh, there's a gap between our ability to hire officers from the time we hire them to the time they're fully in service. There's many multiple steps that they have to go through. So uh, until we bring the numbers up, I'm hoping 130 at some point, uh, we're going to have a problem. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Vertoliga. I believe the city has uh, made great strides in making sure that the business permitting process is more streamlined. Um, however, unless we address the crime situation and unless we hire more police officers to keep crime down, businesses will not come to Vallejo no matter what we do. And once that's addressed, let's look at uh, making Vallejo an enterprise zone. And that's when we need to work with our legislators at the state level to designate Vallejo as an enterprise zone so we can give tax incentives and tax breaks to investors and businesses. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Summers. Yes, I believe that we absolutely have to work with our uh, permitting departments to make Vallejo a much more business friendly city. I think we need to speak well of our city to attract people here. But also what I'm doing every day is working with the sheriff's department um, as well as the probation where many persons, they wanted to reject the uh, community corrections partnership, the CCP, where uh, persons could actually get training and job development opportunity as a deterrent uh, to crime, that's something that we must continue to push. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Mapala. Well, I still uh, need to reemphasize that uh, basically the, uh, the problem of Vallejo is the, uh, the crime situation here. And uh, right now, we, we are working on a deficit. We're short of funds. And so the only way to solve this crime problem is to field security guards on the street, armed security guards on the street. Um, also, coupled with this, we, we need to generate employment by way of uh, attracting investors, giving them tax incentives so they can be attracted to come to Vallejo. Thank you. Ms. Smith-Simon, this question is for you. There's been a public outcry and concerns about public employees' unfunded pension liabilities and health care benefits, what solution would you suggest to meet these obligations for the city of Vallejo? I believe that the city is already trying to address that by making sure that they're continuing to pay on the unfunded portion of the liabilities that we have. I think the two-tier system for the employees now that we're hiring people on is going to also help because it brings down the cost for the city for employees that we're bringing on, which also brings down the cost of the liability as far as health care and pension costs. I think we really need to start looking at the issue along with the state of California because it's not just Vallejo that's facing this crisis. Many cities have the same unfunded liability. I know with GVRD, we made a plan that we were going to fund those liabilities and we were going to pay it off within 10 years so that we didn't have to face that in the future. I think that the city is a little bit more, it's always kind of harder to figure out a year set, determined to make that payment um, viable so that it's paid off, but I think we really need to start budgeting to make sure that these costs are going to be addressed because from my understanding they're going to increase every year and we're going to really be hit hard with them in the next few years because of the way that the CalPERS has changed the repayment system. So I think that we really need to start looking at how we budget to make sure that some of that is going to be incorporated with our budget, which means that we have to also look at cost savings for the city of Vallejo. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Du. 
Yeah, I agree that we need to look at a plan for paying down the unfunded liabilities and at the same time aggressively look at ways to grow our revenues. Um, for example, we could be marketing the fact that Vallejo has the highest per capita um, skilled labor force in the Bay Area. We are also the lowest cost of doing business location in the entire Bay Area and that information needs to get out to the public. Thank you. This unfunded liability is staggering. Combination now brings it to over $250 million. The easiest way out would be if we could get out of PERS, but that's not possible unless we pay the $250 million up front. So there needs to be changes in employee contracts. I commend the current city council for looking at a two-tiered system that's pretty much all we can do at this point. Thank you, Ms. Meisner. So every dollar that we pay employees and salaries, I think right now 41 cents goes to PERS. Uh, that's predicted to increase to 72 cents in five years. So that's pretty astounding. Uh, if we can't get in control of it, we're really going to have a hard time. Uh, I, right now, San Bernardino, San Bernardino is now in bankruptcy court with their PERS payments. And so if we don't get it under control, I think the courts are going to take care of it for us. Um, it's a difficult issue to deal with because it's statewide. But I think the two-tier system right now is the only choice we have. Thank you. Mr. Blackwell, this question is for you. Are you in favor of the Solano 360 project? And what are you going to do to make sure that the city of Vallejo keeps the project moving forward? The 360 project? Yes. Uh, I, I, I'm personally not familiar with the 360 project, but I, we need to be in favor of projects that's going to bring us more revenues, and we need to sustain the revenues that we do have, because they're being, they're being expended. Uh, out in, in, uh, they're not expended properly. Our jobs, per se. I want to switch gears a little bit. We, you know, we are always denying multi billion dollar corporation from coming to this city. That incenses me. If we're going to solve any problem in this city, we need to bring more money in. We need to grow. We need to get rid of this small mind out, uh, uh, you know, mindset that we're not trying to grow this city. If you, want, if you want to be prosperous, you've got to grow this city, and we've got to stop the bleeding, keep our local jobs filled by local folks. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Platzer. Solano 360 is a done deal. It's up to the county right now. Did we get the best deal for Vallejo? I'm not sure. I don't understand the plan in its entirety. Thank you, Mr. Mogapa. I voted to uh, uh, pass the uh, Solano 360 agreement between the county and Vallejo. That was one of my first official acts when, since being sworn in as a council member. It's a good, it's a good plan. It's a $94 million project. It's going to generate jobs and revenue for Vallejo. And we entered into a profit sharing agreement, so it's not all the county that's going to make money, even though it's their land. We have a profit sharing agreement, and it's going to benefit and develop that corner of I 80 and 37. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dennis Clemish. Okay, there you go. Dr. Thank you. I support the Solano 360 plan, and that was a unanimous vote by the City Council. Yes, the uh, Solano County Fairgrounds is owned by, the Solano, by Solano County, so we need to make sure that they uh, uh, make that uh, development, get that development started. I hope that in the two-year, if I win the two-year seat, that I would like to see that project come into fruition. And if that happens, it will be a wonderful uh, um, you know, development tied in with Discovery Kingdom, and then we will now make Vallejo not just a uh, pass-through, but a destination, and that will be wonderful for our city. Thank you. Mr. Summers, this question is for you. If elected, how do you plan to receive input from constituents from the diverse communities within our city? Well, one of the things that I believe in is being very relational. Um, you have to be intentional about uh, communicating and connecting with people in the community. Um, I find myself in relationship with most people uh, across the city. Our city 
is wonderfully diverse. And because we have that opportunity uh, here in Vallejo, we have to take time to hear what our constituency uh, is saying. We have to be able to uh, get out and shake hands, meet people. And once we hear the heart of the people, it will allow us to better make decisions as to the direction that we're carrying the city because everybody uh, counts in the city of Vallejo. So I believe building and establishing those relationships are exceedingly important. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Mapala. Could you rebut to that? 30 seconds rebut. Do you want me to repeat the question? I'll, re I'll repeat the question. If elected, how do you plan to receive input from constituents from the diverse communities within our city? All right, I believe uh, there has to be more interaction, and uh, as mentioned earlier, there has to be communication, and we need to, to approach the people and get feedbacks from them so we can make better decisions. Thank you. Ms. Metzenheimer. Well, I've spent the last 17 years doing input and community outreach. One thing that I've learned is that you can't depend on the city and you should depend on citizens and you shouldn't expect that they're going to come to City Hall to talk to you. The best way to contact people is in the neighborhoods they live in and that's what I've done. Whenever there's an issue, I go directly into that neighborhood and work with the people that live there and I think that's a good way to do it. One of the ideas that our council member Brown had is that she sets hours at Farmer's Market and she's guaranteed to be there to listen to the public so I think that's also a very good idea. Thank you. Ms. Dew? Um, well, I would uh, work on the relationships that I already have established through the Islano Association of Realtors and the Vallejo Chamber of Commerce, as well as through Leadership Vallejo. Um, over many, many years, I've worked hard to develop relationships within you know, a very diverse um, um, community. So I think that uh, the diversity is well represented in all of those organizations, um, and so that would be how. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Shively, the next question is for you. What is the best use of Measure B funds, and how will you go about making sure this happens? Could you say that again, please? Sure. The best, best use of Measure B funds. Measure B funds, and how will you go about making sure that this happens? When this was placed on the ballot, it was a general tax which means it can be used for anything. However, the wording of the initiative sounded as if the money would be used exclusively for public safety, fixing the streets, restoring other public services, and improving youth and senior programs. And my feeling is that that is what the public voted for when they were voting for that tax measure. Unfortunately, legally, the money is not restricted to that use. However, I feel that those issues of public safety, fixing the streets, and improving, restoring essential city services should be first with the Measure B money. How can we make sure that it happens? We have a council now that is following that. The money is kept separate from other general fund monies. And if necessary, we could appoint a citizen's oversight committee. I do believe that we need to look at our essential services in Vallejo first to be restored, as opposed to other things that are maybe not as necessary at this time. Thank you. Ms. Meisner? Well, we talked about reaching out to diverse community groups, and Measure B was used for participatory budgeting, and that was a wonderful way to reach out with people. It was such a great exercise, and some really great projects came out of it. 
But I think also what we really need to use uh, the Measure B funds for is economic development. We've got a great economic cluster study and an economic strategic plan that was created last year, and we need to invest a lot of money in that because when Measure B runs out, if we don't get more revenue into the city, we're, we're going to be in a worse place than we were before we elect, uh, approved it. So economic development, economic development. Yeah, the participatory budget was, was, was handsome, and it really enlightened a lot of folks. But we, we've got fundamental problems. We've got public safety that we've got to subsidize to keep our, keep our community safe. What we need to do is we need to address the problems that's, that's embracing our citizens, and that's underwater mortgages. We should somehow subsidize a, a, a coordinating committee to work with underwater mortgages, perhaps exploring the imminent capacity um, uh, capability. Thank you. You Thank know, you. before bankruptcy, all the projects on the participatory budgeting list were funded, and they should have been, and they should be today, but I don't know how you can look at a $5 million deficit in the face and spend $4 million on something other than a deficit. My solution is more jobs, through a port, put more people to work, collect more taxes. Thank you. This is the final question of the night. We're going to start here with Dr. Vertoliga. This question is a two-part question. You will have three minutes to get each candidate will have three minutes to give your response to this. And then the closing. No, this is the closing. This is, the, closing. This is the, this is the last question. What leadership qualities do you possess to create a cohesive city council who will work together for the good of all of Vallejo? And why should the citizens of Vallejo elect you to the city council? Thank you. I possess a lot of qualities, and one of them is I'm a consensus builder, and I'm a team player. And those are the two qualities that is, that is essential to being on the city council. I'm fully aware that there's a lot of work to be done. And as a council member, my priorities will be, as I said earlier, public safety, crime reduction, job creation, economic development, financial stability, and infrastructure road repairs. I believe I can do this job. As senior manager with Solano County Health and Social Services and 18 years of governance experience, I am skilled at team building, planning, managing operations, staff, budget, and programs. I've been married to the same man for 32 years, retired Colonel Nestor Aliga. We raised three children in this community and they all attended Vallejo's public schools. In the past 32 years, I've lived in Vallejo. I have planted the seeds, done my homework, learned from past mistakes, made sacrifices, and still continuing to learn because learning is a lifelong journey. In my 30 years of community involvement, I was always here. It was not perfect. There were many bumps along the way, but I have endured and I'm resilient. I can work with opposing views, work through crisis, and bring a common sense approach. And as a council member, I will work very hard and focus on the most important issues that really matter to all of us. I will bring consensus building skills and work with the mayor and council members to make Vallejo a great place to live, learn, work, and play. Together, and I invite you to join me to rebuild and reshape Vallejo as a business-friendly, safe, financially sound and vibrant community today and tomorrow. I am working very hard at this campaign, and as a result, I have received endorsements from many elected officials, community leaders, labor, and most especially the working men and women of this community. I ask for your vote for the two-year seat because I believe I can do this job. It's not gonna be easy, but I'm here and I'm prepared. I have the energy, the compassion, and the passion to serve you. So I ask you to please support me for the two-year seat this coming November election. Thank you very much to the Vallejo Chamber of Commerce, to the uh, VEBA, and all the four chambers of commerce. And I thank you all for coming this evening. Thank you for taking the time, because it is you that will make Vallejo move forward. And I ask that you vote for me November 5th. Thank you very much.
Would you repeat the question? Please? Yes, I'm happy to repeat the question. Thank you. What leadership qualities do you possess to create a cohesive city council who will work together for the good of all the citizens of Vallejo? And why should the citizens of Vallejo elect you to the city council? Thank you. Um, there are two reasons. One, first of all, I have been a community organizer for 15 years. Um, Hold the mic closer. Okay. Um, <clears throat> again, I've been a community organizer for 15 years. I've actually um, gotten trained and worked with the same organization that trained President Obama, and I believe it's what took him to the White House, being able to relate to people and work with them. And I have actually been very intentional about reaching out and meeting with most public leaders and many, many business people uh, in our city. So the uh, capacity to work with uh, per other persons is what I do on a regular basis. In fact, I'm a part right now of the management team of a wonderfully growing company here in the city of Vallejo. And every week we are coming together, balancing budgets and working together to uh, produce uh, healthy jobs for people here in our city. And in fact, because we're able to do that on a regular basis, we realize that the opportunities are not going to come just by us sitting behind our desk. That means we have to get out in the community. That means we have to get out and talk with other business people. That means we have to go beyond uh, doing the normal things of just uh, being fractured as opposed to uh, working together uh, at, on a unified front. And what I mean by that, I've literally taken time to go out and meet with the sheriff. I mentioned it before, but because we've built that relationship, we are able now to assist in our public safety by giving persons an alternative to crime. We're able to get people trained, get them jobs, and once a person has a skill, that is a viable opportunity uh, for them to make a choice to do better when they can support their families, when they can raise their children, when they have a skill, it means that they can choose something other than crime. So I'm excited about working with our police department um, and making public safety a priority, but we have to have uh, a means to get that done. I'm being very proactive. I strongly supported the Solano 360, and in fact, we are in conversation with companies now that are very interested in coming to Vallejo. I just need to say this lastly. I believe that Vallejo is a destination city. I'm determined to make sure that we do all that we can to attract the 280,000 people that go through our city on a regular basis to bring venues here that, such that people would really want to come to our city. It's not something that I heard and not something that I'm dreaming about, but it's something that I do. So I encourage you to vote for me in November. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Mapalo. All right. I believe I'm a uh, people and results oriented person. I can work well with people. I believe I can work well, well with the city council and the city council members. And uh, I am uh, very much aware of uh, what the problem of the city is. And uh, my main priorities are crime and uh, employment generation. I believe that uh, my more than 30 years of uh, senior executive experience will help me through in terms of uh, achieving my objectives in making Vallejo uh, a great city. I believe that my work for the last 13 years on GVRD has shown that I have the ability to show leadership, 
to collaborate and build consensus on our board. Out of the years that I've been there, we've only had a handful of decisions that we didn't have unanimously. We were able to keep focus on what the issues were and what was best for Vallejo, and that's what we decided. We come from different ideologies, different political affiliations, and we were still able to decide what was best for Vallejo because that was our mission, and I think that we can continue to do that as long as we can stay focused on what we're trying to do and remember that it's for the city of Vallejo. I've done a lot of work in the community. I'm a federal employee. I'm a 38-year 30 year union member. I know what it means to be a part of a bargaining unit. I know what it means to approve contracts and negotiate contracts. I've been on both sides of that issue. I think I've been able to reach out to the community. I've been able to reach out to our council member to talk about issues and bring concerns that the citizens have and come up with a solution that is beneficial for both parties. And I think that if I were able to sit on council, I would be, bring those same skills and be able to reach across the aisle and sit down and talk with people. I have a great ability to listen. And I think that if we stay focused on the common ground and the common issues and what we're trying to achieve and what's best for Vallejo, that, that we can come up with good decisions. I think we need to start really pulling together. We need to work together as a community. We need to work together as a business community. We need to bring our schools in and all work in partnership because we're all in the same boat. We need to make good decisions for the city. We only have one chance to do it. We want to make it right. We've lived through the process of having bad decisions made. And when the bottom line hits, it's the people that live here that suffer the most from bad decisions. So I think it's important that we continue to look for solutions that are beneficial for everybody in the, in the community, in particular the residents that live here, to make the quality of life improve. I think that I've shown that I can reach over and talk to different diverse neighborhoods. I've worked with diverse communities in the work that I've done in the federal government. And I think I have a good idea on what the concerns are here in Vallejo. So I will continue to reach out to people. I'll continue to have a time for you to come and address me and, and I'll be open for a conversation with you. I think that I've shown that I'm trustworthy, that I'm honest, and I've always believed in transparency in the work that we do. So I hope that you vote for me on November 5th. Thank you. I can repeat the question if you'd like. No, it's okay. Okay, go ahead. Um, I believe that I have demonstrated my leadership abilities as chairwoman of the Vallejo Chamber of Commerce. Um, we worked very hard over the last many years together, um, rebuilding our membership as the economy fell, um, and then reaching out and developing a strong relationship between the organization and our business members. Um, so that we could understand what the challenges were to our individual businesses and um, what their opportunities were and help them get the resources they need so that they could expand and grow and be and, and help improve the community as a whole. Um, I also recently graduated from the California Women Lead um, Training Program, Leadership Training Program, and also... Um, have worked hard with the Vallejo Business Alliance. I was chair of that organization, and that organization represents the um, Solano County Black Chamber of Commerce, the um, Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, the Philam Chamber of Commerce, as well as the Vallejo Chamber of Commerce, which obviously represents um, a lot of the constituents in town. And also worked really hard with um, developing relationships with the local elected officials, and in fact, um, because of those relationships that I've built, I am, uh, our organization is being brought to the table later this month for a um, big meeting regarding Mare Island. And so there are going to be some heavy hitters there, Department of Commerce, Department of Defense, the Governor's um, Office of uh, Business and Economic Development, um, as well as uh, Congressman Thompson, Supervisor Hannigan, um, several council members, um, Assemblywoman Bonilla, Senator Wolk. Um, and we're spending the whole day looking at what can be done to um, expedite the economic, I mean, the environmental cleanup that needs to happen, as well as improve um, the ability for redevelopment to happen there. Um, also, I have worked on the Vallejo Education and Business Alliance because it is important that 
the business community works with the school district and the higher education institutions in town so that we can engage our children and help them become um, college ready and um, employable. Um, we, I did work earlier this summer um, with a youth to work internship program helping uh, students in the high schools get jobs here with uh, Sutter and uh, Michael's Transportation and several others. Um, because ultimately when you ask a kid what they want to be when they grow up, they're limited in their imagination by what they've been exposed to. So working hard with all of those different areas of the community is important to me and I feel that I have earned your vote. Thank you so much. Ms. Scheidler. Over the years, I have worked on many committees, both for the city and for civic organizations in town. For leadership skills, I have chaired many of those committees. Most recently, I chaired the Ad Hoc Citizens Public Safety Committee with seven members who had very, very disparate ideas of what should be done to improve public safety in Vallejo. And almost every one of the recommendations that was approved by that committee was unanimous. I think that demonstrates leadership skills. I also chaired the Citizens Budget Advisory Committee that produced the 1993 report that showed the city where they were going to be if they didn't make changes. It happened. For reaching out to the public, I have had town hall meetings. I've had an art summit. I established a citizens advisory committee for Vallejo sanitation and flood control. And I have always tried to draw in the public and be available anytime anyone wanted to talk to the extent that my personal phone number is on my website. So I invite anyone to call me if you have an issue you would like to talk about. I am running with grassroots support. I do not have the endorsements, nor do I want endorsements from any special interest group. You are my special interest. The citizens of Vallejo are my special interest. Taking money from special interest groups can be dangerous. I prefer not to do that. My platform is improving public safety, fixing our streets, and achieving financial stability. Those can only be done with economic development. In June, I started speaking to the council about the north end of Mare Island, making it more available for that economic development. I'm asking for your support and your vote on November 5th based on my record, my council record, not promises. I have shown that I can make the tough decisions and ask the hard questions. I have no problem continuing that. I have something that I think is important for the city of Vallejo to be able to look at in the future, and that is historical knowledge of what has happened here. That history prevented, most recently, the sale of waterfront property for one dollar. So I would appreciate your vote on November 5th. So one of the things that people know about me is I'm determined and my leadership qualities is I do by example or I lead by example. I'm endlessly energetic and I get things done and I think when you do that you bring the energy, other people want to match that which I've seen in my communities, uh, the various things that I've worked on. Um, and one of the things that we need to do to create consensus is to really look forward. We've been mired in the past. Things have happened. We just we, we have this great opportunity to move forward now. We're out of bankruptcy. We're more stable. We've got the opportunity to bring businesses together. We've got some great things going on in Mare Island. Uh, we've got the Blue Homes is expanding. 
the facade building, we've got the ferry terminal repair center. I would like to see those kinds of things move over to the North Endemere Island because those are the really great jobs for people. Uh, so if people don't know about me, I actually have a, a, a Bachelor of Fine Arts from the Massachusetts College of Art. I'm a trained artist. I put myself through art school. And I didn't want to be a starving artist, so I was de through my determination, I, was, I got into entry-level accounting and over 15 years moved into the San Francisco AIDS Foundation managing their $25 million budget. I was there for 14 years. I was also part of the team that created AIDS Life Cycle. It's a 540-mile bike ride from San Francisco to, to Los Angeles, and since its inception has raised $100 million for HIV and AIDS services. So you can guarantee that I'll be determined to bring the city forward in those kinds of ways. One of the things I really believe in is in transparency in government. I think there's, I can't tell you how many urban myths I've been hearing when I go out precinct walking. <laughs> there's so many things that people believe about Vallejo that never happened. And so I think when the story gets told, people, when, when people understand, we can all get together and work together. Uh, but when there's all these things that people think are, are, have happened that never really did, and you, you can't, how can you even address those things? Um, I also believe that, yes, we need more businesses, but we can't always say yes. The people that always say yes, honestly, are over on Snow Boulevard. So we really need to make sure we've got a great chance to turn our city around and bring great businesses here. And I want to see that happen. I will work really hard for you. So I'd be honored to have your vote on November 5th. Thank you. You know, uh, leaders are not self-proclaimed. They're proclaimed by others. My quality of leadership started, I was leader of my class in college. I've sat on numerous commissions and boards from Sonoma County to the South Pacific Rim, private industry, industry council chairman. You know, as a, as a senior analyst for, for Sonoma County at the county level, it gives me a strong breadth and knowledge of rules and regulations that govern municipalities. Right now, to prove my leadership's qualities, I'm a chairman of the Beautification Advisory and Code Enforcement Commission right here in the city of Vallejo. Uh, when you know the way and can show the way, others will endorse your approaches. When, uh, when I, if I'm elected, I'm gonna implement, I'm gonna get it done kind of a guy with that private sector mindset of making it come to fruition. I am uh, very interested in trying to improve the quality of life here. I'm neighborhood block captain, and what I see is the source resources that we have here locally are bleeding out and subsidizing and enhancing the quality of life in other cities, sprawl cities like Benicia. Their quality of life is tremendous. Their infrastructure, roads and libraries, ours is substandard, it's closed. See, we need to protect our, the biggest expense in any payroll endeavor is payroll, is payroll. And we have a tremendous opportunity with our city jobs here. They need to be occupied by city residents so we can keep, we keep those tax dollars back into our tax coffers and improve the quality of our life. Well, we, we're beyond quality of life now. We're going into life's chances. This is a high crime ridden city. If we reduce poverty, we're going to reduce crime. If you, if, get me, if you elect me, I'll tell you one thing, I'm a fighter. I'm relentless and I will get, convince others through very, very dramatic approaches and demonstration on how it has been done before. And when you have a proven track record in that area, it will happen. Vote for me, I'll fight for you. Thank you. I think the first part of that question was about leadership qualities. And I'll answer it this way. When I stand a navigation watch on a 900 foot ship carrying 3,040 foot boxes to China, I'm responsible for the safety of the ship, the crew, and the cargo. I'm a deck officer, I'm a sailor, I'm a merchant marine. I have, account of, I have authority as a result of it and a great deal of responsibility, but I'm also held accountable. If there's a fire on that ship, I'm in charge of fire response squad number one. I have to put on a turnout suit and put a tank on my back and go on air. It's not fun. So when I announced my candidacy for the city council of Vallejo, everyone told me these were the powers to be, that I'm a dark horse. Nobody knows who you are. You can't win. You have no name recognition. 
Well, that reminded me of the last time I ran for political office, and there was a lot of mudslinging and name-throwing and spitballs. That was in the seventh grade when I ran for student body vice president <laughs> against Sylvia Goodwin, and I won. She was cute and part of the popular crowd. But, uh, see, I do have a sense of humor. <laughs> so, what I'm running, this is the part where I tell you why I'm so great, okay. I think what I'm proposing to do tonight and for the rest of this campaign is to talk about Mare Island because what you do on Mare Island affects the waterfront which is on the other side of Mare Island which affects what happens downtown which is also impacted by Solano 360s. All these projects, all these things are interrelated. What one does affects the other. So what I'd like to do is open an adult conversation about the maritime use of the port of Vallejo on Mare Island. It doesn't have to be all shipping related stuff. It can be alternate, there can be alternate uses that have maritime applications. Gosh, there's a company in the Benicia Business Park that makes offshore and offshore, offshore and onshore wind turbines. They're 240 feet long. They have the wingspan of an Airbus 320. They could build them, put them on a barge and ship them somewhere. If the opposition to this idea is pollution, shipping is the greenest, least polluting way of transporting commerce. I'd love to have that discussion. I invite all of you to sit down and get to know me at the farmer's market. I'll be sitting in front of Dave Sippy's furniture store on one of his chairs next to one of his tables and would love to have a discussion with you because I'm pretty multifaceted. My website has my resume on it. I have more degrees than a thermometer. It's chrisforcouncil.org. I hope you can vote for me. And if you can't, and if everyone here tonight says yes to the idea of a port, then I've done what I set out to do, because then four of these folks will form a majority on the council, and they'll get you that port, and they'll get you those jobs. Okay, so... Uh, I just want to let you know I'm already on the city council and I'm already serving you and the reason I'm running is that I want to be able to continue what I've already started. Uh, being a councilman is a very serious business. Uh, as far as my ability to do the job, I think my record speaks for itself. Uh, if you want leadership, I got 25 years of uh, military service. If you want business experience, I've got 10 years of private industry experience. And I was sworn in last January 7th. I voted on some very key uh, resolutions, Solano 360, passing the budget, among others. What we do is take care of you. Vallejo is like a $200 million uh, corporation, and your council is your trustees. We're supposed to keep you safe. We're supposed to provide you a service. You need to understand that that's what the city does, whether it's water, police, fire, Infrastructure, fixing your streets, that's what we do. We approve, as a council, approve all the contracts and we give oversight to the city staff. Uh, your city manager is the CEO, he runs the day-to-day -day operation, but he reports to us. We hold him accountable to us. Um, when you see us dressed up on a Tuesday night, uh, starting at four o'clock and some nights we adjourn at midnight, we, we try to look decent because we are transacting your business. It's your tax dollars. That's what we do in the city council. And, and so what I'm trying to do right now is to make sure you are safe. You are not safe. We have 85 police officers, a city of 130,000 people, 85. We need 60 to run a watch. We have 43. There's burglaries daily. Neighborhoods come to the city council and say, look at all these maps. These dots, these green dots are burglaries. These red dots are car thefts. And you, all you're looking at is a sea of green and red. Uh, you are not safe. And this is why I, I battled, I fought hard to hire 17 police officers. I mentioned to you earlier, we've hired six. Three are in background. The rest are in local police academies. But we, are, we have officers that are retiring. So you got this gap that we're trying to fill, but we're losing officers. So, so it's a challenge. The other thing is, you know, as far as uh, 
medical uh, emergency calls, uh, you're going to get a very good response. But if it's a burglary, you're not going to. So we need to fix those. Um, we need to look at the North Mare Island. It's the last piece of real estate that we own that holds great promise. Remember, the last development was Six Flags, or back in the day, Marine World. And it's been 27 years. Okay? So please support me. Keep me in the council one more term. Thank you. Thank you. This concludes our forum for the evening. Again, I want to thank the Empress for their, their generosity in hosting this event. I'd like to thank each of the candidates for coming up and sh taking the time to do this. And thank you for taking the time to run and your interest in the city of Vallejo. We greatly appreciate it. Please remember to vote on November 5th. Thank you.